and welcome to the Vital Moments Podcast. I- I'm back. It's uh, it's me, John Wicks here. Um, I had done a couple hosting, and then some other people are doing some hosting, and uh, somehow they made me do it again. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I like doing it. It's 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 fun. Um, and with me, yeah, yeah, I should introduce also who's on the podcast with me at this uh, at this time. It's uh, Amy Stevenson. I was part of the team here at Vital Point as well, Amy. Good morning, and how are you? Good morning. Uh, well, before we hit record, I was joking a little bit. Can't quite do much about the bags under my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're all like oh. a little tired from the weekend, but it was a fantastic weekend. Um, yeah, so I, I'm doing, I'm doing great. Just reflecting on just all the amazing things that God's been doing throughout our sites, and even yesterday in our gatherings. Yeah. It's just so exciting. Yeah, it was. Um... It was a great time up in Clinton, where where I'm based. Um, it was Father's Day, so we had some so we had some guests, some family that were visiting visiting people um, in our area. So that's always yeah. it's always cool and nice to see. Um, I think I think maybe the first the, we did this podcast once before, and that might have been a month, Mother's Day as well. Uh, that's exactly I, actually. Yeah, <laughs> last time we hmm. were on. Yeah, so uh, we're we're getting up the. Mother's Day, Father's Day combo is you and I. I don't know how that works because I'm actually not a father. Um, <laughs> so I'm here hosting the Father's Day podcast. It's actually not about Father's Day, but it, uh, no, it's kind of funny. Really. <laughs> um, I mean, we are, we, are, we are talking about a father and often people refer to um, Abraham as the father of, of faith, uh, right. father of many nations, father of faith. So I think it was super appropriate that we kind of looked and examined his life on Father's Day. Um, and you, you were, you had a chance to un- unpack a lot of that for us. Um, and I think you've mentioned that Abraham is one of your favorite people in the Bible before. He is. Um, cause I felt like on Mother's Day when I talked to it, Sarah, I gave him kind of a hard time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it's just, you know, you're trying to tell the story and it's true, but like understanding he's also carrying so much weight of this promise and in charge of yeah. you know all these goods and people and livestock and so you just there's some measurement and he's trying his best to provide and care for um the people that he's responsible for and you know as we look at our own lives yeah we can make those kinds of mistakes out of our sort of need to do it on our own anyways um but yes he is one of my favorite when we play in this series right away i'm like i want abraham please give me him <laughs> um he is I don't, I've just always been so drawn to his interactions with God and right. the way that God communicates with him and encounters him. And even like, you know, we didn't get to touch on this, but when God's looking at Sodom and Gomorrah and how he has to deal with them, he lets Abraham in on, hey, this is what we're thinking. On his plans, and I yeah. Just, yeah, I just think there's so much beauty and almost at ease in that just conversation walking with God that I've just been always so attracted to about Abraham's story. And so, um, yeah, I don't want it to come off that like, I'm just <laughs> giving him a hard time. Um, but I, I, I think his story is, is stunning. Obviously it comes with lots of mistakes, but it's, it's just such a beautiful, um, picture of a walk with God, I think. Yeah. And even in, in a, you just reference that Sodom and Gomorrah story and, and check that out if, if you don't know it. Um, one of the things that's tr- I, I, as you just mentioned that it's like Abraham actually like is in conversation with God like hey I'm, you know yeah. don't 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 bring your judgment on these people even if there's like 50 righteous people and then he keeps lowering the number and, and yeah. just, he just has that dynamic that relationship he's close to God where like they have these like conversations basically back and forth and and he brings this request to him um another thing you kind of Abraham looking at looking at his life and you know, we we kind of don't know a lot about his early life, right? Um, because by the time we meet him in the Bible, and um, he's being called by God, and he's already, you know, grown up. Um, he's yeah. pretty sure probably he's around seventies. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. around there. So, like, we don't actually know a lot about his early life, or what it was like, what their kind of concept of of of, of God was. Um, quite frankly, it probably wasn't what we think. It was probably like some idol worship going on in his culture. And then he encounters God and and he gets this call. And it's kind of crazy. If you think about, if you think about the context of the, it's like, I'm getting called by God to go out, to go to this place that I haven't even seen before. And like, 
the amount of uncertainty that comes with that calling is kind of kind of crazy to me. I don't know how you feel about getting yeah. called and uncertainty and all that. Yeah, like it's one thing to, you know, move to a different city. Like he's moving from one of the most civilized, wealthy nations of the ancient world and to go where? To go live in a tent. Yeah. It's like and like again, this is a time and age where like life's dangerous if you don't have allies like you're in trouble and and to go where you don't even know where you're going like i i don't know that's just like wild to me um yeah it's just it's hard to leave one thing and not know where you're landing yeah. and just hoping god will show it to you right like i'm not gonna miss it right <laughs> i don't know that's just it's wild to me like when we really sit in what that actually would cost him and again it's not just like he's a single dude and it's not going to affect really anyone he is in charge of a lot of people that are his family but work for him and yeah. um livestock and like you know he has all these things to consider like he is the provider for all these people and this stuff and you know he's married obviously so there's that to measure like this is not an easy an easy yes yeah no, it, it really, it really wasn't or wouldn't be. And I think it's, it's nice to see that like Abraham took that huge, bold step of faith into that uncertainty because yeah. of, of, of the calling that he felt on his life. And, yeah. you know, and as I think of my own life and, and, and many of the people that surround us, um, I think people struggle with that, that calling. Maybe, maybe the peop there are people that have a sense of what God is asking of them to do. And it's just, it is scary. And it is, there's lots of, there's also lots of fear there. So I just think the idea of, of calling when we look at Abraham is like, it's okay to be, have those doubts and fears. So I think you, you, you mentioned that as well um, in, in your talk. And, and, but like that, those doubts and fears are not, um, uh, are not to be what kind of stops us. And that's kind of like what the whole deal with faith, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause faith is not void of those things. Like, yeah. Because I think, um, I mean, David Campbell has a stunning class on this on the Theosu platform, um, where he really goes a lot further in understanding really, truly what faith is. And so I did pull like a, quite a bit from that and learning and understanding um, for this conversation. But I just, we can get so caught up and there's been so much wrong teaching in the past too of, you know, faith is like this blind ignorance to the reality that we live in because like, no, that's not real. Like I'm not sick. And you're like, no, but the doctor said you're sick. Right. And so that's not faith. Faith is recognizing the reality, recognizing I've got fears, I've got doubts and yet yeah. obeying anyways, because I'm going to put my hope and my trust in God to fulfill whatever it is that he has for me and my plans right and yeah. so it's not those things where it's void of that like just even a silly simple example of like stepping onto the teaching team like it's terrifying it's terrifying that you're handling this book that leads people to life and you yeah. want to do your best to stay true to it to be um real and also relevant and it's terrifying like the getting in front of people part like whatever that's that's okay for me. It's, it's the writing and making sure that this is legit. This is like truth and it's grounded in the word. And also people are going to be engaged by it, challenged by it. So there's that moment where every time it's terrifying to me. And yet I know that God has asked me to do this, at least for this season. And so I'll, I'm obedient and I trust him to make it all happen in the process and, you know, have to put my ego and any pride aside and just humble myself before him. Right. So whatever yeah. it is, an obedience in our lives, it just, it's going to cost us something and it's going to require us to walk in humility in that and recognizing it's okay that I'm afraid that is not a mark of, I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. It's just a mark of, the reality of what this is going to cost me. And it's about the obedience piece. It's not about the feelings piece. <laughs> yeah. I mean, feelings can make things so hard and difficult and uh, a lot of the times. And, you know, I just want to encourage people who maybe are trying to figure out what they're calling or what God is calling in their life. And not everyone is called to like be a missionary and go overseas or be exactly. a pastor or like there are different callings and like you can whatever job or role you might have um there's a calling on your life that exists outside of those kind of vocational kind of things and we're all 
I mean, ultimately we're all called to be, um, we're all called to be Christ's ambassadors, right? Exactly. Um, that's, our, yeah. that's a, that's a big thing for us to recognize and start living out in our daily lives. So I think the idea of calling, sometimes we get hung up on like, it's only like about my job or what I, where I'm, where I'm at. And it's like, a, it's a calling to live in a certain way. And Abraham, you know, he was called to, to be set apart. He, this is one of the big things, um, set apart, not taken out of, but set apart for others. I think it was a, it was a beautiful way, way that you put that. Did I get that right? I got that right. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because there is that piece of God sets us apart from the way of the world, right? He yeah. asks us to live differently. Jesus lived very differently than the rest of the world, but it's not in this like fearful, like we can't let the world in, we can't be like them, but rather in a beautiful, we're set apart in order that God can do what he needs to do inside of us, that we can be a blessing and we can reach people and extend ourselves to them. But yeah, I think too, in, in the fear and the doubt thing, just one thing I want to add to that piece is those things can exist, but when we, we can allow those things to lead us to unbelief, to not that and unbelief is also just not a feeling either. It's that blatant rejection of God and his promises. And so we can allow our fear and our doubt to lead us in faith and just going, okay, this is, this is what's on the table, yeah. but I'm going to be obedient anyways, or we can allow it to go, you know, you know what I'm doubting this stuff, which therefore probably means, you know, this isn't real. This isn't true. It's not for me or whatever it is. Right. And it, it it's just disappointing when people allow those things to lead them to unbelief and rejection of God, instead of trusting in God and going, okay, this is what I've got. And this is my fear. So like, I'm going to lean into you, abide in you and your love mm -hmm. and allow you to do that work. But yeah, 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 it's a beautiful idea and picture, I think, for us that we're not just set apart from, we're set apart for. And I think that paints a much more inspiring picture of God's call and ask for us while we yeah. are here on earth. Yeah. And I think that, I think that goes along, goes going along with calling and, and, and kind of like putting the faith and trust is like, um, we might, re it might require patience from yeah. us, right? It might require a lot of patience. Like it, it, we look at Abraham's story and how long did he wait for the, he, God shows up. He's like, okay, go here, go to this land. I'm going to bless you. You're going to have so many descendants and all this stuff. And Abraham's sitting there waiting over like 30 years or whatever it is. Right. And so there's, there's a, there's an aspect of, of this idea of, of putting our faith and trust in God. Um, and so at first we're like, yep, I can do that. And then the waiting and it comes, yeah. it kicks in and, and God, a lot of times God, um, requires, you know, patience from us or God has, God has his own, a better way to say it is God has his own timing. Right. Um, that is maybe not the same as ours, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is often not ours because we're very immediate kind of beings. We're very like, we're part of a, part of us is made that way that we're, we, we are more experiential in the moment and we want things for right here now um yeah. but then god comes along and says yes i have these promises mm -hmm. but they're not gonna necessarily necessary sometimes maybe but they're not necessarily gonna happen um yeah. overnight and no one no one likes to, to to wait no and the reality of this is is it can be both a very frustrating piece of god and yet also such a beautiful mm. piece of god the more that i meditate on him and who he is and his character and you know dig into the bible and have conversations with other people they hear their stories hear how god is teaching them and walking with them god is never in a rush <laughs> especially like the day in asia we live in right it's one thing after another like my calendar can sometimes slip into that and then i have to like hit pause and go okay we're, we're blocking out this night because we need a moment um in order to keep a healthy rhythm of life but more and more i think you know he's just never in a rush and anytime anything in life um my husband and i actually will talk about this a lot my husband jeremy and i um and he's very much if all of a sudden we're like making a major life move like for example um last spring last year we were looking at a house that was actually closer to the poplar hill site and 
measuring that and thinking about that this has been in the market forever and so we're like oh, okay and then all of a sudden another family came along made an offer and then they're like hey you need to make an offer if you want this place and we're like whoa 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 so the, the moment that we feel rushed into something that's when we're like whoa no because i just that's not god's not chaotic like that he's so patient and i think too the biggest thing that can get us beyond like we live in a culture of instantaneous and like yeah. oh you just fix yourself overnight or whatever um but there's also this piece of we get so hyper focused in my timeline, my space, my life, the purpose for my life that is going to be a fulfillment of some kind of dream or something like that, rather than recognizing that there's this overall thing that God is doing from the beginning of time until Jesus returns. Yeah. Like he's at work doing and what's stunning is we we just get to play a, a piece at a part of that and in a way it kind of takes the pressure off i think in that recognizing he's at he's at work beyond so much more than what we will know or understand and even in our very finite time and space that we will exist in this earth he is working on so much greater things right the fact that we today mean you john and the rest of <laughs> the community and people all over the world are a fulfillment of abraham's promise is like just a beautiful picture of our promises aren't even our own like it's not even about us or for us it's for what he is at work doing to glorify his name and i think just yeah it can be frustrating obviously the waiting but at the same time we step back and look god you are at work beyond what i will ever know or comprehend or understand and what an honor it is to play yeah. even a minor role in like you know, being, being Jesus in the flesh to somebody, right. By embodying his character qualities and impacting their life or ma simply making someone's day by treating your cashier at the checkout, like a person and asking about them, right. All those yeah. small pieces, we have no idea how God's using them in that eternal timeline. And I just think, yeah, we can get so hyper-focused and caught up in this peace and time and space that we live in and we want to accomplish something is not about us. <laughs> it's about something so much greater. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I mean, you touched on that right just now. And um, the fact that, you know, God makes these promises to Abram and he sees some of them kind of fulfilled in, in right. his lifetime. Yeah. Uh, he's, God says, you're going to be a great nation. Well, Abraham doesn't see that. No. Uh, and God says, you're going to bless the entire world. And like, that's something that's been worked out over thousands of years and is still ongoing now. So there's, you know, yeah. So like this, this promise that God made to Abraham, God, God fulfilled some of those things during Abraham's lifetime, but also some of them were for the future as well. And, and, and we see that, in, as you mentioned, in, in the church now as the ultimate kind of fulfilling of that promise to, to Abraham. I think that, I think that's an, an amazing kind of, to have that kind of mindset of, of trying to like maybe step outside ourselves a little bit and look at what the overarching kind of theme and when you read the bible you know front the front the back kind of you kind of get a glimpse of this picture of what god is doing and working out through through creation and through the story of humanity and ultimately you know jesus comes to to this earth to redeem and restore and renew all things and again that's a pro that's part of that promise has been accomplished mm -hmm. but we're still looking forward not not that we want to hyper fixate on the future and, and forget about the now, but we still look forward to the time when Jesus will return and the ultimate finality of and fulfillment of all these promises that God has, has made. It, it, that's still something that we hope and wait for right, right now. And mm -hmm. um, hopefully we can wait with some, with some patience and some endurance as we're, we're as we're called to call to called to do. Um, yeah. I, I think, I think all those kinds of things, so like we're talking about calling, we talk about having to wait and the wait on God and the promises that God makes in their lives. And I think a lot of that comes, uh, makes us really uncomfortable in where we are in our situation. I, I know, I know for me, um, it certainly does. It's like, okay, God, um, I'm, I believe I'm going to, you know, I, I believe these promises are, are, are real that you've made to me. And, you know, I, I think of my own life and I've had, we need to do in my life um i i you know i i didn't feel that god called me to be a single person but i was until 39 i got married at 39 years old and that was a long time of waiting for for that to happen and but it was an amazing um amazing to to kind of wait on that um 
And so there's all these different weights, but it makes you, makes you uncomfortable. They made me uncomfortable waiting and makes me uncomfortable when I think of like, what is God calling me to do and maybe do things that I'm maybe struggle with, or maybe push me out really outside of that comfort zone. Um, so I think, I, I guess I just want to encourage people that like being uncomfortable is not a bad thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's. Well, and when you think of it, I, again, this would be a great CrossFit example if Ron was here. If Ron was here, sure. But, <laughs> but when we look at that, yeah, it's it's the uncomfortable things that really make us lean and rely on God and who He is. And, um, yeah, I just think we we have the, such an ability to live a comfortable life right now, in especially the time here. Today. And here Where we are. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, there's just so much convenience, so much comfort. I mean, I joked about how I don't like camping. That's horrible to me. Like, why would I sleep on the ground when I can sleep in my, you know, bed that has perfect. I, li I like camping. So <laughs> good for you. And I'm grateful. Um, but you do no. Uh, yeah. I just, the whole thing. Anyways. Uh, yeah. That's another conversation, but, uh, Sometimes we got to do uncomfortable things because yeah. as we do those things, it pushes us um, beyond our boundaries to that full reliance on God, to trusting him because I'm uncomfortable. And it's not just like, oh, this is an uncomfortable situation. No, like the fears and the doubts and the wonderings are all compiling in because this is so uncomfortable. This is beyond, I have to trust you, right? In that going and leaving, like, again, this was his source of provision. He was working clearly yeah. in some way in this city and things like that. And, and so that's another level. It's not just about like, oh, I'm uncomfortable in a tent. Like, no, there's so many pieces to that. Maybe uncomfortable is even not even the best word, but there's pieces where we're really pressed and we're almost feeling like we're going to be crushed. And, you know, the New Testament talks about this. We're pressed, and, but not crushed. And how God in that space, like he shows up more real when things are so hard and so difficult than when it's all, what does David say? Sunshine Skittles or something like that? <laughs> Skittles, I, <don't> know. <laughs> I do love Skittles. Um, but those are the pieces when like just, our faith really grows roots, right? And I'm sure there's an agricultural analogy in there too that I, it's too early for me to pull up. But I don't think either of us are farmers here. So, <laughs> but even when we look at Jesus' life, when we, you know, touched on this in the talk yesterday of John 15 and Jesus talking about he's the true vine, he, he had, he was that seed that had to die in the ground. Obviously, that's uncomfortable in so many ways beyond yeah. what we imagine um living a life here on earth just like us and he was that seed that died in the ground and then out of that death out of that incredibly uncomfortable painful difficult beyond what we could imagine experience he, there was new life that came out of it that we get to attach ourselves to so when we think of Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. And some people will talk about it as being like grafted in. So like, this is the little piece of your culture I know, right? Where you take the piece off and you attach it to the thing you want it to grow on or whatever. Very technical terms, but um, yep. but that, that idea is like, that's painful and that's so hard. And yet in that, now we become this extension, this experience of we get to be attached to the tree of life, which means we get experience true life and life abundantly and yeah in the turtle sense one day that will be realized but for now in this piece we're attached to that and then we become an extension of that so we become the tree of life to everyone around us with that offering that as we are attached to him as we grow out of him and his source abiding in his love and again this is not an instant process this takes no. time yeah. And we begin to bud, we begin to bloom, and we begin to produce fruit. And in time, that fruit grows, develops, becomes ripe. And then we get to offer it to the world and say, come taste and see that the Lord is good. And yeah, there might be some fruit that comes pretty instantaneous as some people have some really radical um, experience or conversion experiences in coming yeah. to the Lord. But where, like, I think if there's a family in Poplar Hill that's been coming for a few months. They have a few young children and um, even their kids 
they said this on starting points they're like our kids actually have t- told me like mom you're different and dad you're mm-hmm. different and I'm like, like that to me, I'm getting goosebumps. It's just, it's so incredible when we attach ourselves to him, that change that can happen. And now they get to be like, this is why, this is what you're experiencing. And this is why, because Jesus is completely radically changing our lives. And it's just beautiful. It's yeah. Just- <laughs> yeah, it, it really, it really is. And a couple of things that kind of you, you touched on in there that really got me standing out to me is like, yes, overcoming comfort stepping out taking a step of faith but we're not doing that alone like we're we're, like god jesus promises that he'll be with us um if we if we're followers of jesus he's given us the holy spirit Mm -hmm. and 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 like that's the most important thing but also like um being in a community that allows you to take those bold steps of faith because you know that there is people behind you rooting for you cheering you cheering you on kind of kind of thing um i think that i we need to be reminded of sometimes that like yeah like we might feel like god is calling us to take this step of faith god the, and and what did the david uh, campbell talked about the biggest step of faith is just believing in the first yeah. place right yeah um and like that might be where you're at i don't know who's listening to this or watching this that might be where you're at just like you're god is calling you to take the step of faith and putting your faith and trust in jesus and um, for those of who've already done that, there might be another step that God is calling you to do, mm-hmm. but you know, know that you're not alone. God is with you and that hopefully you have a community of people behind you to support you in, in, in that journey and in taking those steps and encourage you and pick you up when you fall down and cheer you on when you have a success and all those, and all those amazing things. That's why, you know, it's so important to be part of a community and, and yeah. not, and not try to struggle and figure all this out, all this stuff out on, on your own, because like, then you're just getting in your mind and like, that's not where you're going to have success in in, in those kind of places uh, for sure. Um, Yeah. Well, I think we're kind of wrapped up on this conversation, but like, this is the end of the by faith series. Mm -hmm. This is, this is it. Um, You kind of bookended it. Actually, you started it us off with uh, a Sarah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and then we're here at the end with with Abraham, so I think it's cool. And any kind of like, I'll just ask you any kind of like large takeaways uh, that you haven't maybe hit on um, that you want to kind of just stuck out with you when you're go- when you were going through the series or listening to uh, some of the others go through it as well. Yeah, I think honestly, personally, I was really challenged in this series as well in examining mm-hmm. my own life, examining how I approach God and how I trust Him and. Honestly, it was a huge encouragement for me in that um, understanding this is beyond what we feel and yet obey anyways. And in the midst of that, God shows up. And so I was sitting and reflecting a lot throughout this series on on my life, on my faith journey and um, how yeah I relate to God. And, you know, about a couple of weeks in, I really started thinking, what would my by faith statement look like? What's that <laughs> oh. hope that I have? <laughs> Um, just once because it's a snippet, right? It's a snapshot of that person. It's not their whole story within those few verses. And, um, yeah, so I've been thinking about that. I mean, I'll share, I shared this actually in my weekly, if anyone reads the Poplar Hill weekly, they have already known this, but as I was reflecting on that, like if there is a thing, it would be, um, and I have a family, so they, they watch my life closely. They see me at my best and at my very worst. Um, and thinking, you know, if there's anything, I'm going to get emotional. Um, (laughs) Anything that I want to leave behind, it's that I I loved his word and that I worked so hard to understand it and apply it to my life and walk it out. And so if that ever, if all the legacy that I leave behind is that she loved his word and she walked it out um, and inspired others to do the same, that's wrecking me right now. But that's, (laughs) that's my hope and prayer um and you know whatever else god has for me at the very basic it would be it would be that desire for my heart um but i think there's that moment where yeah let's not make these make these by faith statements into these wow my tears are just uncontrollable now um all good into these hopefully no one watches it they're just listening right yeah Um, (laughs) 
we can make these things, these huge things. I want to know my purpose. I want to understand that. I'm like, well, what just would it simply look like for you to love your family well and love your neighbor and um, love the people in your life the way that Jesus loves them? And um, yeah, maybe there is a, a, a bigger piece, but at the very basic, that that is the heart of the Father is yeah. to reach those who are far from Him. And so. Yeah, just loving him well. So anyways, I I don't know if that sums it up. That's where I'm sitting at as I exit this yeah. series. And, you know, it's wrecked me in a few different ways. And yeah, it's just, it's so encouraging looking at these stories of faith and how hot mess they were. And yet yeah. God's, God's sovereignty and powerful work all in the midst of it. And they're considered a hero. And that's just so encouraging, I think, for us. Yeah. So encouraging. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, that's a great place to to wrap up and end it. I, I feel many of those similar feelings, just looking at these men and women, uh, they give me hope because yeah. their lives, like you said, complete mess at times, but <laughs> held up as an example of faith in the Bible. Yeah. Um, so an am amazing, amazing. Encourage you if, you, if you missed any of the weeks, go back on the YouTube channel, check those out. Um, uh, they're all there for, for you so you can watch every, every, every part of this by faith series. Um, well, thanks, Amy. Thanks for joining, joining me thanks, this morning. You're yeah, so <laughs> yeah it's, it's great. Great to come in and, uh, do this, uh, and be able to do this together. Um, I think there's only one thing I want to say to everybody, one announcement, uh, and then, uh, we'll wrap here is uh family day, family day on, uh, this Sunday, June 23rd. Uh, so whatever location you're at, um, we're not having a regular Sunday morning gatherings, Instead, we'll all be coming together in the Poplar Hill location at four o'clock, four o'clock. So um, be there. It's outside. So be ready for that as well. Uh, yeah. But hopefully we'll see you there this Sunday at four o'clock in our Poplar Hill location. Have a great week, everyone.